Empires of the Undergrowth is an RTS game that is centered around ants. All ant species in the game have their own respective workers and one or two types of soldiers. Now what if I were to do something crazy and try and complete story mode while only using workers? Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we will find out. Is it possible to complete the story mode of Empires of the Undergrowth while only using workers? The rules are simple. I am not allowed to use any ant aside from workers. Without further ado, let's begin with 1.1. This Formica Fusca queen has set up home beneath a rotting log. She is fat and vulnerable. Her first brood will need to move quickly if the colony is to survive. Their priority now is to find food, and there is plenty around. But there are other hungry creatures down here. The workers will need to be vigilant. Welcome to 1.1 New Home. Before I begin, I'd like to explain the difference between workers and soldiers. Workers can do jobs around the nest such as raising brood, constructing and upgrading tiles, digging, and collecting food. They can also fight, but their damage output and health is not something to be admired. Soldiers can fight and carry food. Although workers can do both of these things and more, most soldiers have much more health and damage at the cost of literal food points. It is important to have a balance of workers and soldiers to fight off any threat and replenish any soldiers lost in the fight. We of course won't be making soldiers. I am playing as the black ants, which have no special perks about them. This level is simple, because my goal is to kill all nearby creatures, which I can only do when I tunnel them out myself. I immediately begin by gathering the free food at the start and constructing some workers to help me fight the first enemies, the Devil's Coach Horse Beetles. These are only the larvae of their adult forms, but they are still vicious. Even this early in the level, I was struggling to take good fights. Nonetheless, I kept pressing onward. I would keep going to upgrade my workers, improving their combat capabilities by almost doubling their health and attack damage at max level. Eventually, I have worked my way through the level, and have 38 level 3 workers along with several hundred food points. Being prepared as I could be, I opened up the final wave starring more than a dozen beetles and four adult beetles. These adults not only have much more health and damage, but also a spray attack which will confuse the ants affected by the spray. They tore through my army, while my ants could keep reviving and going back into the fight. They would, this would continue so long as my food stores held food. I was almost out of food and my army would soon stop coming back. What I could do is have one of my worker groups ignore the enemy to grab the corpses of the larvae and bring them back as food. I did just that, but it was only a temporary fix, and I soon found I would be forced to refund the levels on my workers for the 50% food back. After repeating this for a while, I barely managed to defeat the enemies. Although this was only the first level, this was super close to a loss. This Formica Fusca colony has now established itself as a rising power in the undergrowth. Soon their territory will need to expand above ground, where new challenges await. For the time being, however, the Queen is safe. This level was completed on the hard difficulty. For reference, the difficulties are as follows. Easy, medium, hard, and insane. With that finished, onto 1.2. This Formica Fusca Black Ant Queen has given birth to her first brood. While the workers established their new territory in the earth, above ground, a nearby colony of Formica Sanguinea slave maker ants are on the lookout for would-be victims. These ants specialize in stealing larvae from neighboring nests and raising them as their own. If the black ant colony isn't prepared for the inevitable incursion, they may be wiped out entirely. Welcome to 1.2, Subjugation. Before I even begin, there is a detrimental issue. In the top left, my condition for victory requires the construction of 50 black ant soldiers. Luckily for me, I can still make soldiers, but I cannot use them, as the title suggests. This is still an issue, however. In this level you are playing as the black ants, and you are meant to grow your colony whilst surviving attack waves from a slave maker ant colony. These ants will send soldiers and stealers to take your larvae, weakening the enemy. Your food comes from the funnel web spiders found in the surrounding area. You can kill them and collect the food they keep on their webs. Things in this mission go fine until I am forced to spend my food on useless soldiers I can't even use. I am eventually overwhelmed and killed. The solution to this issue is simple. The slave maker ants will not start sending their attack waves until the first funnel web spider has been killed. 
I can simply take food from their webs and ignore the spiders. I can't avoid killing the spiders forever, but I can get a huge head start on the slave makers by the time I am forced to kill one. Before the attack waves overwhelm me, I am able to build up, use a bug to trick the game into thinking I survived the final wave, and complete the level. Once again, the slave makers return to their nests with new black ant larvae to raise as their own. The raids will continue, but this Formica Fusca colony has proved its capacity to endure and grow. Eventually, they will surpass their parasitic overseers, and the continued raids of the slave makers will reduce to nothing more than a mere inconvenience for the great black ant empire. This was completed on the hard difficulty. Welcome to the first Formicarium challenge. Quick disclaimer, this is possible on the hardest difficulty even with workers only. This is because our mutated ants in the Formicarium have skills they can unlock to triple their damage and take must, much less damage. I did this on easy because that's what I played the first time, and what I didn't know was that I can't replay the challenge without making an entire new save file and doing it there which would require me to do the first two levels again, and this video took way too long anyways, so I decided not to. Things start out easy, and they get a little harder, but my workers tear through the enemy like paper. Super, super easy. How has the colony been responding? They mounted an excellent defense against 20, 25, and even 30 Fusca ants, as you suggested. Perfect. Perhaps we can provide more of a challenge for them next time. What a fantastic suggestion. This level was completed on the easy difficulty. Now, on to the beach. This Formica Rufa wood ant queen has laid her first brood in a burrow near the sea. Her nest is just on the outskirts of the beach, a perfect vantage point for scavenging hapless morsels washed in by the tide. At the moment, the tide is out, but it won't stay that way. The ants must make haste and stockpile what they can, while they can. Welcome to 2.1 Rising Tide. This level introduces a new ant colony, the wood ants. This species introduced the ants that have the ability to spit formic acid from their abdomens. Although their health is less than even the workers, their damage output is staggeringly high. Of course, with this newfound power, the enemies of the beach will step it up as well, forcing me to up my game to give my workers any chance of victory. As the level starts, I dig out of my nest. My only goal is to survive three nights. I scrounge around the beach in search of morsels for food, while avoiding the huge tiger beetles. As the day progresses, I build my worker task force to become a substantial fighting force. When the tide begins to rise, I'm forced to slowly pull back to my nest. Tide is coming in. Soon the lower levels of the beach will be flooded. Any ants caught in the surge will be washed out to sea. Once night falls, the beach becomes a hostile environment full of hermit crabs. Hermit crabs are incredibly tough and feature healing ability, although their damage output is rather low. After a moment, a crab locates and enters my nest. Upon entering, it is surrounded, and my workers begin to nibble away at its enormous health pool. Hermit crabs will be a source of frustration in this run, as if I am unable to fully surround one, it may heal faster than I can damage it. As the first crab is defeated, two more follow, but are also taken apart. The final wave has three crabs which clump together, making it tough to surround them. After a long and boring fight, my workers manage to overwhelm and defeat the crabs. The sun rises, and I may continue my collection. I press on as normal through the whole day. Towards the end of it, I decide to challenge one of the huge tiger beetles. These beetles are incredibly fast and have huge area damage. After sacrificing many workers, I end up pacifying this beast and continue to the next one. It falls as well, and I harvest their corpses for their food. The knife soon falls again, but tonight there is another creature around. There is another creature roaming the sands tonight. Arctosa littoralis, the beach wolf spider. 
In the day, these spiders retreat to the shade provided by larger plants on the edge of the beach. But once the sun is gone, they are far more active than on the hunt for a midnight feast. The Beach Wolf Spider. Normally, these are more of a threat than hermit crabs, but in workers only, we have the numbers to overwhelm these unnerving arachnids with ease. Multiple spiders of different sizes enter the nest, but they're all taken care of. The sun rises again, and I gather more food. I killed more tiger beetles today, but I eventually got so much food, I didn't have a need for more food. I was just waiting for night to fall on this final day and see if my preparations were in vain. The sun sets, and I await the creatures of the night. The first spider wave enters my nest, but they are taken apart fast. Seven crabs soon enter my nest, and take loads of time to kill, but are eventually disposed of. A huge wolf spider has found the colony. This one is a mother, and her recently hatched brood have followed her into the nest. These ants are facing an overwhelming infestation. The final wave enters, and it is a huge mother wolf spider. Her children are there to assist her and pose a serious threat. If I make even one mistake, this could spell disaster for my colony. I'm just messing with you. They were taken apart easily, and I secured the victory. As the ants grow in number, the local predators pose less and less of a danger. Eventually, they will be displaced from this area entirely. Despite the dangers of the beach, it seems this intrepid queen's gamble to establish her colony here has ultimately secured her success. completed on the medium difficulty. I tried this on hard, but the crabs were too much to handle. A number of small Formica, Rufa, and Fusca colonies have established themselves on this beach. Those nearest to the water's edge have enjoyed the first pick of the washed up seafood for the past few days. However, as the sun and moon near alignment and the first spring tide of the month approaches, high tide draws nearer to these intrepid ants. Seemingly aware of their circumstances, these colonies are preparing to relocate to higher ground. There is only one way up the bank, and the route is currently occupied by a small roofer colony. These defenders will have to hold their ground against the oncoming siege. It will be three days before the high tide washes away the competition. If the colony survives, it will inherit the beach. But this won't be an easy fight. Welcome to my personal favorite level, Queen of the Hill. This level is a unique one where you must defend your high ground against a black ant and a wood ant colony whilst defending your aphid flocks during the night. These aphids constantly produce honeydew during the day, which is a consistent and reliable source of food. However, during the night, new aphids will spawn and many ladybugs will appear in an attempt to consume the aphids. You must defend your queen and the aphids to buy time for the rising tide to wash away the competition. When the level starts, I go outside to gather the honeydew. I collect honeydew and use it to build up my worker force and ready for the first attack waves. A party of Formica Fusca black ants are heading inland. The high ground roof of colony must defend their territory. The low ground colonies send their forces, but my workers are too much to handle. By the time night comes, I've created enough workers to easily defend both aphid farms. Some creatures come to fight my ants, but the worker swarm will not waver at the sight of these puny threats. The level continues as normal, with lots of the same thing. I'm going to skip things like this until something worthwhile needs to be shown. Nothing out of the ordinary happens until on this night, an absolute war breaks out. These two hermit crabs came to assist their beetle brethren. While this was happening, the workers on the other aphid farm were being overwhelmed as well. I ended up pulling them back to help out at the huge battle on the left. Man, even after playing through this game three times, it's moments like these that make me still have an undying love for this game.
Last night's high tide was dangerously close to the low ground nests. Today is their last chance to relocate. The low ground colonies won't show any restraint. Their attacks will be desperately vicious. Fortunately for the high ground colony, many aphids survived the night. Access to food will be pivotal for the upcoming battle. The sun rises on the final day and I leave the aphid farms. I stored enough food to last and waited inside my nest, welcoming the attack waves. They sent their attack waves. Multiple times they sent their waves together. They were no match for the worker swarm. The day is almost over. The low ground is already starting to flood. The lower ground nests are emptying completely, and the ants are rushing up the bank. This is their final assault. Eventually, as a last effort, they emptied their nests and sent all they had. But my workers would not waver. As the low ground colonies barely escape the tide, they rush up the bank to meet their untimely desire. The wood ants upon the hill have finally defeated their would-be successors. Tomorrow their empire will expand to the undefended intertidal flats below, commanding both the aphid farms and the bounty of the sea. This colony will rise to become an undeniable power in the undergrowth. This level was done on the medium difficulty. Formicarium Challenge 2 Welcome to the second Formicarium Challenge. Just like the previous one, I did this on easy, but it is possible on insane. The scientist sends the opposing ants, and they are killed easily. Eventually, he sends his tiger beetles to see if we have what it takes to survive them, which we do. After all, all of that, ten spiders invade our nest, but they are taken apart without issue, and I am reminded how truly pathetic easy mode is. Victory to the Raptor! What's going on here? Uh, yes, the, the ants performed excellently against the Rufa. They just staved off an attack from 40 Rufa ants. 40? I think that's enough for now. We don't want to overstress them. Agreed. This was completed on the easy difficulty. Now, on to the rainforest. This young queen has successfully raised her first daughters beneath the leaf litter of the rainforest floor. The nutritious fungus she fed them as larvae is now dwindling. If they don't find food quickly, they will all starve. Welcome to 3.1, The Harvest. This is the first level with the leafcutter ants, a unique colony with the toughest ants around, featuring miners, media, and workers. Miners are the workers, media are the standard soldiers, and majors are large, expensive super soldiers that are masters of combat. With our even tougher ants, we are now expected to repel even tougher enemies. Oh boy. As the level begins, the game explains how leaf cutters work. They are herbivores and only eat fungus that they get by cultivating leaves. This fungus turns into refuse once used, which must be disposed of on unique refuse tiles. The most accessible leaves are located to the north of the nest entrance. However, another ant colony has already laid claim to them. 
The close proximity of these nests places the two colonies in direct competition with one another. Time will tell which has the potential to grow into a great empire, and which will submit to the unforgiving law of the undergrowth. After collecting some leaves, we are told our objective. Another leafcutter colony is located to the north, where the most accessible leaves are. Our goal is to race them to the 10,000 leaf units, even though they should have better access to the leaves and a larger colony. The nice part about leaf cutters is when I can only have workers, they collect tons of leaves. My leaf income is through the roof. The downside is I cannot fight anything. All these large creatures, my workers can hardly stand up to them. Only while my whole army is present do I stand a chance. The hillside at a colony is falling behind. With their demise at hand, they have no choice but to strike back at their opponent. Eventually, I've pulled ahead of my rivals. They realize their fate, and in a desperate attempt, send a task force to slow me down. They end up sending four major ants, some of which are max level. These ants are incredibly tough and nigh unstoppable. They will ravage through my workers and cannot be stopped. I'm just messing with you again. They can't stop the swarm. I collect the remainder leaves from the level and achieve victory. The ants have subdued their rivals and achieved dominion over the clearing. As the competition withers, they will extend their territory in all directions, firmly establishing their agricultural empire. One day, this colony will number in the millions. This was completed on the medium difficulty. This level may have been possible and hard, but this was the final level I recorded and I was super tired. I didn't want to fail so close to the end, only to have to try again. This small leafcutter colony has established a foothold in a clearing near the base of a tree. Their location provides prime access to lucrative harvesting grounds which have gone unchallenged for the past few weeks. However, unbeknownst to the ants, the peace is about to be broken. A scourge is drawing in. It will be here by morning. Welcome to 3.2, Frontline. I was dreading this level the moment I began this challenge. More on that soon. When the level begins, it is night time and we are given seven extra workers and seven media ants. We can't have that, so I dispose of them and use the extra leaves for more workers. The narrator speaks of a scourge that will arrive in the morning, so until then, it's time to harvest some leaves. Several meters south of the nest, a legion of nomadic Eseton Berkeley army ants are preparing to march. They set up camp late last night, and will now conduct daily swarming raids on the surrounding areas until they see fit to move on. This humble leafcutter stronghold will soon lie directly in their path. Morning has come, and the army ants are here. These ants are very difficult to kill, especially with prickers. I will have to push them back beyond my territory eventually, and fighting them so far away from my nest can lead to too many issues. My ants can be intercepted by large creatures and reinforcements take far too long to get there. For this first day I can mostly ignore them. I just keep collecting. I continue this through the night as well. During the next day, however, they soon extend their marching activities even further and it just so happens that my nest lies directly in their next path. The Aceton soldier lines are bearing down on the nest. The leaf cutters are about to be overrun. The battle has begun. I rally my forces and stand my ground. Fighting this close to my nest allows reinforcements to arrive quickly and makes fighting easy. The army soon retreats. I continue gathering through the night, preparing to begin pushing the army back in the morning. The 
sun rises, and I must muster my swarm. When the army ants arrive, I meet them head on and fight with ferocity. Going, but eventually, disaster strikes. This stupid mantis. These mantis are incredibly powerful and have a rapid healing ability. My entire army can barely out damage its heal, and if it intercepts my army, I will receive no reinforcements and am forced to de dedicate too much time to killing it or forced to retreat inside my nest and wait for it to leave. This happens so many times through the level. This causes so much precious time to be lost, and it makes pushing back the army much more of a hassle than it has to be. Soon the sun sets again, and the army rests for the next day. I must continue harvesting. But there is an issue. A fully grown whip spider has detected the presence of the leaf cutters. With supreme prowess, this gargantuan night hunter can knock back, swipe, and lance even the toughest major soldiers. A considerable sustained flow of resistance must be called upon for the colony to stand any chance of dissuading this legend of the undergrowth. This fully grown whip spider is in my way, but it will not be deterred easily. This is the most powerful creature currently in the game, and it features a deadly bleed attack and a devastating area crunch. Hundreds of workers in constant resistance must be used to take down this beast. Despite being the toughest creature currently in the game, my workers kept coming and ended this beast's life. But the threats of the night aren't gone yet. These fully grown crickets love to screw me over. They feature the same bleed the whip spider has, as well as a lot of health. I seriously think these crickets need a nerf. After a long night, the sun rises again and I hope to win today. But it's never that simple. As the army arrives, I meet them once again. But after killing several dozen army ants, the bar on the top barely budged was another stupid mantis. I'll tell you this now. This was my sixth attempt on medium difficulty, and I was convinced it was not possible. Once I pushed the army back to their final line, my attacks began to mean nothing. They wouldn't ever do anything. By the time I rally my army to fight again, the bar has gone up more than I pushed it down. And to top it off, many mantis would constantly harass me, making things even worse. Theoretically, it is possible to do it on medium, but the luck and dedication it would take would be enough to make any man go mad. I felt hopeless and defeated. After thinking and thinking, I couldn't find a way out of this. I did what I did not want to, and I turned the difficulty down to easy. Here's how that went. It started as normal, and I was able to quickly build my army up. Fast forward to the day I started to push the army ants back. I have much more success. The difficulty change made my workers control the army ants much easier and prevent them from stacking up. I could go longer without requiring reinforcements, and every army I killed would push the bar back further than it would on medium. The day ended in my favor, with the army ants almost defeated. I killed the giant whip spider again, and continued on to the final day. We march to the army ants for the final time, and our attacks aren't in vain. Soon after all this time, I overcome the Aceton army, and claim my long-earned victory over 3.2. Against impossible odds, the soldiers of the Atta stronghold met the tyrannical intruders with ferocious defiance time and time again. Unable to break their lines and after tremendous losses, the army ant swarm has finally elected to move on. For the leafcutters, the ultimate trial is over. This was completed on the easy difficulty. It's theoretically possible on normal, but I decided to keep my sanity. It is, however, impossible on hard or insane. I'm afraid we've ran out of time. 
It doesn't matter if the nest isn't perfect. Run the experiment, then clear out the specimens and bleach the equipment. Yes, yes, I know. I'm doing it. And when you are finished here, I think we should have a word about your conduct around the laboratory. I think we should have a word about your conduct around the laboratory. What was that? Nothing, nothing. Starting the experiment. Good. Let me know when you have a result. Okay, my little ants, this is it. The winner will have the privilege of joining me for the ultimate test, the real final experiment. The loser will be relegated to the waste disposal. The four macariums are connected. Let the war commence! This is it, the final level. Welcome to the third four macarium challenge. By this point, you are meant to have a huge army comprised of black ants, wood ants, and leafcutter ants that can relatively easily crush the opponent ants. We have slave maker ants, army ants, and trap jaw ants. My workers cannot in any way stand up to the opposing army, even with their huge buffs. The only way to win this level is with AI manipulation. On my side of the formicarium, I can kite the opposing army by going everywhere where their army isn't. Once they move to a new spot and kill my workers, I move as well. If they simply entered my nest, they would win very quickly, but their AI doesn't allow them to do so. I am not taking good trades in terms of food, but I have so much more food than my opponent, it simply does not matter. After about 15 minutes of constant kiting, my opponent runs out of food and their army begins to thin out. After all the survivors are slaughtered, I am free to enter their nest, kill their queen, and complete the challenge. <laughs> Perfect! I knew my reps would prevail. Now we can prepare for the real... Have you finished yet? Oh, yes. Our raptors have dominated the Formicarium. Wonderful. I expect a full report by the end of the week. For now, you can start by clearing away. Make sure anything contaminated with that jelly goes straight to the incinerator. Yes, yes, very good. This was completed on the easy difficulty. Is it possible to complete the story mode of Empires of the Undergrowth using only workers? Yes. This challenge was so much fun and a unique way to play the game. Even after struggling so much on Frontline, I managed to do it. Although I'm not happy, I did it on easy. Empires of the Undergrowth is a grotesquely underrated game, and the developers deserve more support for giving the community this fantastic game. This is not sponsored, I just have an undying love for this game. If you liked what you saw, consider joining the Slug Disco Discord server and saying hi to the devs. I'll be there as well. Go subscribe to their channel. And if you're feeling generous, go buy the game. Thank you for watching.